Hey, it's another day in paradise. Welcome to Sama. I'm Derek Mazzoni. Um, we've been doing a weekly live stream uh, presenting amazing artists from all over the world that present, that play um, sacred uh, healing music, music with an intention to go beyond um, just yourself, to get closer to the one, whatever that one may be. We're not taking any religious stance, but you know, just like the music to help you going through hard times. We're based in Seattle. Uh, this is a difficult time in the Pacific Northwest here. There have been fires um, all up and down and it's been smoky. It's a bit dystopian. And uh, sometimes in these situations, it can really bring you down. Um, so uh, today I have an artist which will help bring us up. I've been a fan of her work for quite a while. Her name is Alia Benali. She is um, based in Brussels, um, but spent most of her time in Tunisia. She's a singer, songwriter, graphic designer, dancer, uh, collaborating with a whole bunch of amazing musicians from all over the world. Um, she just released a project and a CD called Call to Prayer, which I've been playing, which is lovely, and um, is working on a variety of different kind of uh, works with different artists from different parts of the world. Uh, she has a project coming up where the um, the works of Rumi will be sung for the first time in Arabic. And um, her spirit is amazing, and it's an honor to have her here on Sama, uh, Seattle Sacred Music and Art. Welcome, Halia. Hello. Good evening, or good morning, maybe, there. There yeah. is no there, there is no morning, there is no evening. Thank you <laughs> no. for being here. Um, Thank you for the invitation. Tell me uh, just a quick question. What keeps you inspired? Um, you know, these are interesting times uh, where we have um, confinement. And in confinement, um, you can uh, shut down or you can create or do something in between. No judgment, either one. But mm. uh, I'd love to know because you're busy. Tell me what keeps you inspired. Um, mainly love. Uh, I love people and I feel all the time connected to them. Uh, and we don't we don't need really um, physical connection. It's uh, I have this uh, very uh, very known hashtag that is never disconnected souls, and uh, we are always connected. And whatever I sometimes I have dreams about people I don't know, and then suddenly they write to me and say, "Okay, I, I was dreaming about you," and uh, and we start talking as if we are were the the best friends ever. So yeah, this connection, this love, this. Um, um, yeah, this love is mainly what inspires me all the time. You say you have dreams about people. Is it sometimes, because this has come up uh, quite a quite a bit with people um, that I've been talking to, their dreams are very vivid right now. They're very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes they'll remember somebody that, um, and this has happened to me just recently, this person comes into my dreams, I can't remember their name, I've known them, and I'm just always curious, why? Why is this person in my you're an artist, so I'm curious, like, why do you think this comes up right now? What is going on? We we are always connected, actually. We are we are always there, all together, but but we have sometimes priorities and we have many things also that we are busy with so many things, and maybe during this confinement we could also re-evaluate um, the priorities or I don't know, we, we are at rest somehow we are yeah, resting yeah, yeah. and uh, everything is so i don't know it's like um, like the water was was so uh, troubled with uh, with a lot of things and suddenly it's more pure and and so we we can really connect with uh, we can be more sensitive and and feel the presence more i don't know maybe we need also to to because we we're longing for some people and some friends who cannot who cannot or that we cannot see and we cannot meet and so they are present all the time i i, I work a lot on this presence okay so yeah. is it is it like almost um uh you know when you're away from somebody that you love um it's that the absence makes the heart grow fonder you you miss them more you know if they're there all the time it becomes just an everyday thing. But if mm. you're not, and especially as an artist, when you're trying to work with somebody and you're trying to create this work, it, it creates a really interesting opportunity to um, to um, 
to look in and and see what comes out would you agree yes um whatever we do um that connects us to ourselves whatever we do that pleases us whatever we do that that is connected to the heart somehow that we really want it's not like uh, we just uh, we just do things like that without thinking we do things because they are essential to us because they are important to us and uh, like being a bit honest with 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 oneself in this this is really important and even if we we do the same actions and the same things every day uh they are not boring because at every day we 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 like there is like a new love like a new a new way of doing it a new inspiration a new it's really important for me it's like it's like these um sufi songs that are repetitive we cannot say they are boring actually they they repetitive and and then the energy is coming is becoming more and more intense uh, at the end it's wow climax uh, and we need to to work for this we need to do the same movement every day and a lot and and get into it and then let go oneself into it and then yeah this is the yeah uh, it's, it's boring when we don't pay attention actually <laughs> That's true. It's true. This is a beautiful yeah. way to describe it. Let's let's. Um, your music is is very much, and your work is very much tied to that. Your um, um, it feels everything that I've seen and I've heard that you're you're really striving for that connection. Uh, some artists are very. Um, I don't even know how to describe it. Material almost. It's like here I am. You know, this is this is how great I am. This is what's going on, and it's it's great, awesome. You know, that's the way you express yourself. It feels that your music is very like you're you're trying to make that connection in an interesting way so i want to i want to start with this uh video so thank you for sharing this work you just you just actually recorded thank these you. things for sama um let's start with the first um with the first song and i want to let people know a little bit about it this is uh, uh biri dak what does biri dak mean biri dak is with your uh consentment or uh i'm talking to god and it's a song of um Kalthum, actually Okay. And it's a song where she says, um, it's you who decide, uh, and, and not me, actually. You okay. give me what I deserve or not. Somehow, something like that. So let's, let's start with this prayer. It's a good idea. Okay, let's start with Biri Dak. Yes. And Sama. Oh, 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 oh. 
Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Really uh, before we start, I want to say hi because I see a lot of comments of a lot of friends from Egypt, from Tunisia, and I'm so happy. Salam <laughs> alaikum. Thank you well, for uh, joining us. These are the connected souls I'm talking about. This is true. This is true. <laughs> and uh, if uh, everybody out there, if you have a question for Galia, please, uh, um, please uh, let us know, and uh, we will ask and we will share at this very interesting time. But first. Share with me uh, the names of the musicians you're working with. Yes, the um, the oud player is a long, long, long. We just has been so long, like almost thirty years that we work together before working with our friends, um, and uh, we know each other like really brother and sister. Like we're really together all the time, and uh, and so we we just breathe together and and make music like that. So Mufadal Adum is the old player. He's from Tunisia as well, but mm -hmm. we met here in Belgium. And uh, Pascal Snook is uh, sound engineering. Uh, in the um, she's first a sound engineer, but now with me, she started making music on uh, on the computer on Ableton Live and playing with me. And she's also a uh, very old friend. Uh, so. I wanted to just to, to, and it's quite new that we're working with electronic uh, things together. It's a it's a nice sound. It's an it's an it's also um, an interesting way to bridge um, from from a generational perspective because mm -hmm. um, you know it's I mean for a period it's like inevitably uh, once you start digging into this into this music you want to get the the real pure stuff a little later on but it's a nice bridge to something and then it it's an opportunity for. Uh, for the music to evolve in many different ways. Uh, mm -hmm. I find it really, really intriguing. But speaking of intriguing, Um Kultun, tell me about your relationship with her, which is going to lead me to another uh, question that I'll, I'll preface right now. I want to know why music? Why? What got you into this? I know it's not your only art form. You're also a dancer. You're an actress. But what is it about Um Kultun that seems to resonate, not just with you, with many others, many other... Yeah. Um, and, and not just Arab musicians, like literally... Yeah, what what is it? What's going on there? Um, I listened to Umkulthum since I'm like since I remember. I think I was four years old, and I was singing one long song of her, um, and I was always telling my father, "Is it a man or a woman?" Actually, what I loved about her voice that I said her voice could be the voice of God. That is no woman nor men, mm -hmm. and um, and there is a, such presence in her voice, such um she's yeah presence again and um also um i thought when i was a child that she was my grandmother because her picture her photo was in the bedroom of my parents 
And I thought she was the grandmother that uh, could never visit us. I don't know why. I was a bit angry with her. But uh, and and actually, when I started singing on Karthum, I learned from her. She was my school because I didn't learn music or singing in any other place, but but by listening to wow. her and to yeah to some other also great uh, singers from Syria, from Iraq, from Tunisia, from everywhere, actually. This is how I, I learned music, by listening and loving them also. I needed to love them. Um, <clears throat> and she was my school. So I, I, when I started singing it uh, pub publicly, um, it was a way to, I, I did it like a granddaughter could do it. I don't have her voice. I don't her, have all what she has. But I wanted to speak about her, and it was to an, uh, a Western audience that knows her somehow, but um, could never really attend a concert of her. Or I wanted to 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 make her present to them and to tell more about her, not copying the way she's singing, not mm -hmm. and also choosing songs that really touched me and. They're not much commercial, They're like this one, I mean. Nobody would sing that like that. It means it's... Uh... So, Um Khartoum is my school. She's my grandmother. And she's she's just the reincarnation of presence. <laughs> what okay. could be a presence? No, no, this this is part of our the narrative we're having right now, where you're actually mm -hmm. connecting and sharing and continuing and presenting. And I find with works on Mkutun and your work and others that... Um, you know, we talked about this a little while ago. This is a really interesting transformational time. Um, um, and it's been going on, you know, for a while. Um, you know, I'm not just saying like right now, COVID or anything like that. We've had Arab Spring. We've had other times where it's like things change. And when you have things change, opportunities open up. And um, and it's the role of artists to kind of um, kind of guide people through that. You know, so so there's a there's an expression that kind of people resonate with, and that helps them um, process all the things that are going on, and then kind of like land somewhere where it can grow. We talked about mm -hmm. this. It was just like moving through, like you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the one door closes, another opens, or things are moving through, and and it's a powerful role for an artist. And so leads to my next question: is like, why singing? Why art? Like, what what? Tell me a little bit about your story. Like, what brought this about? Because there's so many things to do in life. You know, yes. you could do art, you could do medicine, you could do nothing. Uh, what is it that um, I wouldn't suggest doing nothing? That's really, the um, <laughs> oh, but it would be the toughest thing to do. Yeah, you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're just like, here's my heart, here's my soul. Look at it, listen to it, and uh, yeah. and it takes a lot of courage because, you know, not a, you know. Uh, you could present beauty and sometimes that is the most horrible thing you could do. Somebody's going to react to it horribly and it takes a lot of courage to do that. So tell me a little bit about what, what brought you here. Um, well, I don't know. So, uh, somehow I, I was studying graphic arts and uh, trying to do something else, trying to do something else, but it ended up to music. Maybe if I didn't leave Tunisia because I, I left to, for studying and I came to Belgium and I felt longing for these moments um, spent in Tunisia, singing all the time at home, everywhere with friends and uh, listening to the radio all the time, watching TV all the time. And suddenly I'm in Belgium alone, uh, without TV, without radio, really. There wasn't internet at that in 87. And the, the only thing that remained was these memories, these memories. And, and I started singing um, for me uh, at home. And then I, I sang in front of some people, uh, Belgian people. And I was really surprised how could they understand. I thought singing is about what you say. Um, actually, they didn't understand anything. But they could catch some feelings, catch joy, sadness. Um, they could catch all this, and and I, suddenly I felt, oh, it's about emotions. Oh, so I can tell a story through music and and voice and singing, and that's how I started. Um, I wanted to tell a lot about my my country, my culture, 
the people I love, and also I'm in Belgium, so also a lot of questions about uh, foreigners and uh, you are different, so you are our enemy or you are kind of, I, I never exper experienced racism myself, but I could see situations where he it was knew tough. That existed. So I just wanted to say, look, we are really the same. We feel we, 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 are, we are afraid about the same things. We love the same things, but we have some different colors, different tastes, different. Uh, but at the end, we, we, we react to the same topics in a different way. And uh, we were really close and, and see how much it's beautiful here and how much you can understand me. And because emotions are really what we have in common. So it started like that. And, and they called me here the, the ambassador of Arab culture because they felt like I'm, I'm, I'm like building some bridges between mm -hmm. my culture and their culture. And also here in Belgium, I could meet many other cultures because the, the, a lot of yeah, you have amazing. a lot of cultures here. It's amazing. So I could really, and I love these cultures, and I love hearing vo um, languages I didn't understand really, but I, I listened to them with my heart, and and this was a, an, an amazing gift from life to me. <laughs> so you, it was timing. It was the right place at the right time. Um, Eighty-seven is an interesting time, especially uh, for Arab music, because you had the. It was like the first time you had Rashitaha, you had Khaled, you had artists that actually became huge mm -hmm. and and uh, played this music. I'm not saying you were doing Rai, but it was the first time that uh, music sung in Arabic and playing in clubs. Yes. Um, there was this, it was a really, it was the first time. Before it was like Uncle Tum to a small audience, mostly yeah. immigrants. Then it became big, you know, became yeah. like a thing. So, um so it, it, in a way, you had an, um, how do I say this? Uh, you had a touchstone, like a resonance. You know, there were other people that looked like you, sung mm. in this language. And, uh, and it was the beginning of the, of, the, of the world music. So yeah. something, all the universe were co was calling for that. The world was co calling yeah. for, for, for this. So I, I was at the right moment, yes. I, you were at the right moment at the right time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well done. Well done. Let's <laughs> let's let's go. I know that people want to hear uh, want to see yes. hear your music. Let's go to um to uh, uh, our next um, uh, song, which is Cairo's Betrayal. Tell me about that. That's a yes. big, big statement. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, tell me more about that. Oh, somehow it's 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 not political. I'm not going political. Even if what I do, many people say it's political. Mm -hmm. Well, politic. If it is about life, then I'm political. Um, and it should be about life. <laughs> um, it was in 2012, and it was the first time I was, uh, no, not the first time, but it's, I, I was back to, to, to Cairo, and um, I was meeting a lot of people, and I was listening to, uh, to people just complaining of, uh, oh, my God, what is happening now? There are the Islamists, and now there is, I don't know what, and I don't know what. It, like, always complaining of, all what is new and what's happening and we we don't we didn't really expect or didn't uh, and then i the, these lyrics are only about look in these difficult times just to be connected to the one uh whoever is your god but um here is god be connected to god and uh, be connected to yourself many birds will come and these birds will leave i mean life is not always uh, static life is moving and now now things are coming whatever they are bringing with them they will leave at some point mm -hmm. so this is mainly and i used what is really special in this song that i used a mode that is uh, the mode of the Adhan, one of the modes that we use for the Adhan, the call to prayer and because these these words were said like a call to prayer like to remember you to just pray. Uh, and, and this is Kairos Betrayal. It's also called um, Causer to Causes. It means that he causes things, God causes things, uh, because he has a project. There is, there is an idea behind it. It got will it, lead you somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, we have to accept. It's about acceptance, actually. Perfect. It's a perfect song for the time. Faith really and right acceptance. Now. Yes, yes, perfect song. Let's go to Cairo. <laughs> Kali Benel. Yes, 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 yes. One day, one day, one day. Let's yeah. see. Thank you. 
سبب الأسباب مسبب الأسباب واحد الديان واحد الديان واحد الديان something with that i know a lot of people that would be like all over that song and that group. and you know no. you know the, the first the first rhythm was done actually with drops of um rain on my trash my my <laughs> on my my um what a metal. metaphor for life metal. no yeah it's it's like that i mean you use everything is life to make joy to make just to to be to to live yeah. to Whatever you don't need big machines, of course you need big machines to put things together, but not to replace 
the original no. our musicians or instruments are or life or no, yeah no, it's true so <laughs> so you know uh, let's talk about that a little bit because you're using confinement to um and i love that word but to create you know th this is an interesting opportunity for people to dig into whatever they have and and explore you know i have two children two daughters who are amazing and they're doing this time to you know like dad look what i made dad look what i made it's like yes yeah. want to be out be with friends and everything but the reality is that you're 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 using this time to take things to the next whatever that is you know it's like mm -hmm. it's a really intriguing opportunity to to um i don't want to say the word evolve because we're constantly evolving yeah. no matter what's happening but it this is just in a really interesting time in in our our existence and to hear and see music created like this is pretty phenomenal but the other thing that i wanted to chat with you about you travel you you work with other artists you work you know you're you're heading off which i'm jealous um you're heading off to uh to italy to work on a, a project you worked on call to prayer um this 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 uh connection that you have with people from other cultures did this manifest itself from your time in belgium the fact that you you are not exactly a crossroad but kind of like a crossroad there's all these different cultures belgium is also you know there's a it's a center of the european union you're mm -hmm. you're going to experience all these things you can experience cuisine you can experience languages cultures is, is, yeah. is that the is that like a driving thread in how you work well today today i meet people through what i'm doing somehow um, a lot of people that's how I, I i know a lot of people it's through what i what i how to say what i export mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, from myself and i show i'm here you have a gps and you, you can find me and i'm here i'm doing this um even if what i'm doing is so different i mean you cannot say galia is doing sufi or galia is doing uh, tarab or galia is doing blues or whatever i'm doing a lot of things it's, it's about storytelling and it's about what i want to say um but people meet me this way and i meet people this way through dreams also and all i mean it's mainly through music today that i meet people it's yeah. not uh, it's not because i was walking in the street and i am or somebody I, I wanted to meet somebody it's and i let this happen i am really really open to what life can bring me and what life can i'm always surprised and why this 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 musician at that time or this um even even people listeners they are not all seduced by what they do but the ones who come are really connected and it's not you cannot come there. Yeah, you may come there from ac uh, by accident, but you may stay because you feel connected. That's how things happen, actually. No, it's true, and it, mm. it's interesting because we talked about this in '87 when you started. The term world music manifested, and it was the first time that um, the music industry realized that you could actually sell product and book tours and have artists play in languages that the audience doesn't understand mm -hmm. like it, it's not important you you can understand it in a way that transcends language mm -hmm. and and um you're actually able to to have a career and continue mm -hmm. and to grow and you know that was kind of like your beginning but i'm always curious in the in the context of an artist evolves you're also an actress you're doing dance graphic design performance um how do you manage all that? Is it just like a project comes and I am going to work on that project? Or is it more like I have a year-long plan and these are the things that I want to oh, do? No, I don't have any plan. And uh, that's why I'm always available for new experiences and new things happening. And uh, sometimes I feel like I'm calling for something. I don't know what exactly. Is it a movie? Is it um, a dance project? Is it mm -hmm. uh, uh, a painting or graphic design or, or a new song or a new poetry or whatever? I feel like sometimes, oh, I would love to have this. And when it's it's really essential and it's really like, oh, now I want to stop a bit music uh, because I need to get some distance and get some inspiration somewhere else. So I get in cinema. 
I get in a movie where I'm not anymore Galia the singer. I'm not anymore Galia the the mother. The the I, I'm I'm that that character that. And and I, I I have a big distance and I, and I'm, when I work on a movie I'm in the movie I even um, I don't go out I'm, I'm I'm just with my my character and that's it and and then also after the movie I feel like for months I cannot get rid of that character. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is because I didn't I don't know how to act actually. I'm just trying to be. I'm I'm being. That that was the best um, advice I had is that in front of a camera in cinema, you don't have to say things or do things. You just have to think things. You have to think that emotion and try to re to connect to something that you have that is quite close to that and, and try to make it present. This is what I, I felt. So I need these experiences sometimes. And many times I refuse cinema because it's a lot of time and it's too much con disconnection with myself. Yeah. Um, so when I need something, it comes, uh, whatever. I needed the confinement, I needed to stop, really, because I was traveling a lot, too much, um, going everywhere and not really, not really focusing on anything, not being with myself. I was really missing myself. And, uh, and then with the confinement, I, well, the whole world stopped. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. guys. I asked for it. <laughs> no, thank no. you. In many ways, thank you. Um, this is beautiful. Um, I want to actually talk a bit about that, uh, like work-life balance, because you're an artist, and so you're 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 um, you're uh, constantly putting yourself out there. But you have to rebuild the batteries um, mm -hmm. to make okay. that to make that work. And I'm always curious is Right, especially for artists from different parts of the world, like what 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 do you do to replenish? What do you do? And every culture is different. You know, sometimes people will go into the woods and you know mm -hmm. just be with nature. Sometimes people will go into the family and just like you know be at home with grandma or with mom and like you know mm -hmm. eating and just that's the replenishment. So I'm curious, like what what do you do to to refill? I mean, right yeah. now you're home. It's like you're yeah. doing it, but but in but general, what do you do? I would definitely stay home and connect with my kids a little bit more. Um, uh, yeah, that's definitely what I do. It's not going out because I'm all the time out. Yeah. So I need to be to stay home and to read, to 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 watch something, and and to rest and also to do nothing. This is really the most important: do nothing and to have no appointment appointment just to, to, to feel like I have eternity for me. And what was really amazing during the, the, the confinement is that I felt like time belongs to me. I was always running after time and he was the master. But suddenly during the confinement, I was the master. And this doesn't happen much in our lives, you know. You never have a hold on time. And I'm not, of course, as like everybody, I had financial problems and uh, uh, like, yeah, to be begging for working. But somehow I didn't focus on this. And I said, OK, no, there's a good, like in the career's betrayal. It's like it is for something better. It is for a change. It is for something. Something is right in this. So I. I, I was really, I had a lot of faith about that, and that helped a lot okay. to, to feel you. that. I hear you. Um, let's hear another song. This is going to be uh, Joy from the Heart, uh, but also I wanted to oh, do sadness. a big shout out to STG, CL Theater Group, who are working with on this, and Global Music Monthly, um, a collection of amazing uh, festivals from all over North America. Uh, presenting their work, and we're honored to be part of that. But let's hear Joy from the Heart, and tell me a little bit about the song before we play. Yes, the, the Joy, uh, the, this song is uh, is um, the product of a collaboration, not a collaboration, actually we met by accident, if we can believe that, in Brussels with Usama Saadawi. Uh, he is a refugee from Palestine and Syria. Um, so th this, this, old man came came to brussels and he was in some place and i know was there once and we met and we now i think we have like eight songs together but now 
this was the first song, the first poetry he 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 offered me, and he uh, he said he's a po poet. So I went to him and I said, "What are you writing about? What what are you writing about?" He said politics and uh, and about. Um, about my country, about my nation, about it. And I said, oh, okay. And then three la days later, they tell me, he wrote a poem for you. So I went to see him and I said, I'm not, uh, I'm not politic. I'm not uh, a country, I'm not a nation. What did you write? He said, just love. Aww. And and this, this song is about love. Voila. Let's hear it. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
That's beautiful. <laughs> I was rediscovering this song with you, Ula. <laughs> it's great. That uh, it was beautiful. And you looked like you were having such fun performing um, uh, it. Joy mm -hmm. from the Heart of Sadness, Galia Benali. Uh, big shout out also to um, to your management, uh, Nahal. Michal, Michal, yeah. It's, it's so important Thank to you, have um, somebody there. <laughs> yeah. Um, to take care of of a lot of that so i want to ask you um because um we're we're we want to make sure that you know that people know the projects that you have going on and the projects that you have coming up because um the reality is is that many you know many artists just aren't playing on stages and it's really difficult so where can people find out more about you i know that you have some stuff on Bandcamp, but what are some of the other things that are coming um that oh we, we it's know? mainly i communicate on the social media platforms like mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter sometimes. And um, there, there, there's always a pinned post on my Facebook page where you can find all the dates, all the places. I'm okay. communicating quite, I communicate myself on, on the things. Um, for now, the, the problem is that all the concerts I'm doing, they're almost sold out because we have like 25% of the presence of people that could really attend. Yeah. So I'm trying whenever I can to, to make live streams from these concerts to communicate also like, for my mother, she's in Tunis, in Tunisia, so sometimes she wants to attend also to, to these uh, these concerts, and so I make a live stream, and uh, and I have all my friends all over the Arab world who are really uh, following, and uh, these are moment, moments where I can I, I'm happy to to feel that they are listening and watching from the other side of the world. It 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 it, uh, it makes this this stage bigger than what it looks like especially nowadays where you have to go with a mask and then uh, yes. get your spot and take off the mask and have just little people um, together and sometimes with their mask you cannot see their face you cannot see their exp the, ex the expression uh, but i can feel it i can feel how they uh, well it's it's very special but it's yeah it's very special uh, maybe we need this also, and I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's another way to communicate. It's another way, yeah. you know, we didn't have to do this, and now that we yeah. have to, um, it's an opportunity to learn and um, and to kind of flex new muscles and see see what's going on. I mean, I think, I mean, that was my one of my intentions in, in, uh, with all of us to do something like Sama, where it's like we, we need to learn. We need to have artists such as yourself and others actually uh, provide some of this guidance to help us because so many people that I'm I'm dealing with right now, they're lost. They don't know. This has never happened to them before. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's a cultural thing where sometimes they have a hard time expressing these emotions. Um, you know, they're closed or their culture has never gone through this kind of a hard time. So mm -hmm. they don't have the body of work. Um, you know, a lot of cultures have gone through hard times. So artists have created works in music or in other ways to help them deal with this hard time. And in some yeah. places we don't. So it's an opportunity for artists such as yourselves to present this to help everybody. Yes, I, I was I was amazed when I came to, to Belgium, to, to Europe, seeing simply, I will give you an example, seeing people driving on the highway. They drive as if nothing could happen to them. Um, and of course, everybody is following the rules and it's fine. But in my country and our con Arab countries, and you feel like you drive fast, but you always have in mind that something could happen. And you will deal with that thing when it happens. We are ready to that. While in, in, in the West, Western societies, in America also, everything oh, should be that way and that's it. And now with the COVID and what's happening, wow what is happening the the world's the end of the world nothing why yes and just be be ready to 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 experience a lot of things like that in the coming days in the coming months in the coming years because it's definitely about to change yeah. and the only way to go it's not it's i'm not saying it's the end of the world no it's the beginning of a new world and also is a beginning of a beautiful connection with yourself 
with with something essential and wider and bigger and so i don't know i i feel and also i feel like um, there must be more and more we have to go global not uh, not uh, economically <laughs> but spiritually yeah. We need to connect. The people on highway in Belgium should connect with people on highway in Tunisia and should just talk about, say, okay, we can find the, the middle. <laughs> it's, we yeah. can, it's really important. No, it's true. It's a, we need that connection now because yeah. uh, we're not going to be able to deal with this alone. And that is the individual and then is the, as a species. We need to mm. find other ways to connect. And art... Mm music especially is that connector because you see that when you're in, aud in an audience when you could be in an audience there are moments in music where literally everybody in the audience is in love with everybody yeah. else in the audience like yeah. something's <laughs> happened on stage and you suddenly know that everybody everybody's in yeah. love at that moment yeah. and that that if we can create that from a global perspective like actual love like actually having people's hearts open up i keep using this and and you know and yes it makes me a hippie and all that but it really is it's just like if your heart opens up then all possibilities yeah. are open but yeah. you know if your heart's closed you might something but no you really need to open up you your know heart you know open. there is this beautiful st indian story saying that god to um to, to hide truth and to protect it. He hides it in a very special place that is the heart of us, our hearts. So that only those who take care of their heart and go to their heart and ask their heart, they can know the truth. They can be well, they can be happy. Mm -hmm. And I love this, I, I, really, I really believe in this. Like, I believe in it, like, uh, like yes, we are in confinement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 you're absolutely right. Um, let's play some music um, and then we'll say goodbye. And I'm not saying goodbye, like I want to have you back on. We're just a big, this is just the beginning of a conversation. But let's, let's, now um, we're going to hear um, Sayyid Al Kaunain. Uh, what is this? Yes. Oh, it's, um, it's, it's about the Prophet uh, Muhammad, وسلم, but it's, um, it's a beautiful uh, meditative song. And actually I sang it when my father passed away. Like a few minutes later, it was a kind of, I don't know, I felt, and I wrote a beautiful text about that. And uh, it was, was like a prayer and um, it's connected to the father for me. Okay. I'm sorry so for your loss. Let's listen to <laughs> Let's hear it, please. Thank you. Thank you. يا سيد الكونين جئتك قاصدا يا جئتك قاصدا جئتك قاصدا يا أرجو رضاك أرجو رضاك أرجو رضاك وأحتمي بحما Oh, <laughs> 
مهتمي بحياك والله يا خير الخلائق إن لي قلبا مشوه بحق جاهك إنني بك مرم وبحق جاهك إنني بك مرم وبحق جاهك إنني وبحق جاهك إنني وبحق جاهك إنني
That is so good. <laughs> we so were in a kind long. of meditation. And... Oh, it's perfect, perfect. Gaia Ben Ali. Thank you. Thank you for being on Sama. Thank um, you. It's really nice to see shukran. you again since 2004. Like, uh, thank Who knew you. we were so lucky then? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we will meet. Uh, we will soon, again. Soon. We will soon. We will. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, thank you. I want, I want to have you on again. I want to thank everybody involved with this thing. Uh, just a quick announcement. Tomorrow we have a special Sama episode with Simon Meja, uh, founder, co-founder of Bomba Stereo, who's got a new record out. We're going to be live from Colombia. And next week at noon, we're going to be live from Timbuktu with Al Bilali Sudan uh, from a studio there. So it, it's amazing. These these you're you're part of a um, a thread, shall we say, of artists that are doing this work that are resonating with um, musicians, with with what's in the universe right now. So seriously, shukram. And um, shukram. <laughs> be well, and uh, we'll see you um, very soon. Stay Inshallah. Healthy. Inshallah. 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 Uh, Inshallah. And stay healthy. Most importantly, stay, yes, stay healthy. Yes, you too. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Bye, Dad.